Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Good morning, Mr. President, distinguished guests. In 1952, Congress established the National Day of Prayer, and in 1988, President Ronald Reagan designated the first Thursday in May for this annual observance. We mark with gratitude the 20th anniversary of his tribute to America's heritage of prayer and religious freedom. Since then, millions upon millions of citizens have gathered to express their thankfulness for God's blessings and seek his continued guidance and protection. This is the eighth year that our National Day of Prayer Task Force has had the honor of calling America to prayer from the White House, this historic and beloved landmark. Mr. President, as chairman, I want to convey our deep appreciation and thanks for all you've done to support this cause during your tenure in the Oval Office. By making prayer a priority in your life, you have set a powerful example. Thank you for acknowledging the need for God's divine hand to be on our country and for personally seeking his wisdom in the crucial decisions you make every day. In our founding documents, our forefathers secured the right for all Americans to communicate their beliefs publicly. As you so aptly stated in your message at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention last month, and I quote, the very first amendment to our Constitution includes the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion. The founders believed these inalienable rights were endowed to us by our creator. They are vital to a healthy democracy, and we must never, never let anyone take these freedoms away. The tens of thousands of prayer events taking place today testify to the significance of this indispensable aspect of our liberty, and just to name a few. The, uh, the theme, first of all, we chose for this year's observance is prayer, America's strength and shield. It's based on the passage of scripture found in Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. As we look at the challenges and perils that the United States faces at home and abroad, especially those of our military in harm's way, we can find comforting assurance in knowing that God hears the prayers of his children. And with a national election approaching, we need to be even more keenly aware of our reliance upon his direction. That's why it's been a privilege to initiate Pray for Election Day, an outreach through which our task force is urging Americans to intercede every Thursday for the pivotal decisions that will be made at the polls in November. We'll be praying for 12 to 12.30 every Thursday, now until the election. In that spirit, I'd like to tell you about several of the unique prayer observances taking place today. People are praying on a special train ride across Alaska from Anchorage to Fairbanks. And in Dallas, two charter buses are traveling the city, stopping to pray at government buildings and other points of interest. Excuse me. Also, private pilots in all 50 states are flying over state capitol buildings and the surrounding areas as they and their passengers pray. At the Pennsylvania Chapel, honoring victims of September 11th, as well as at the site of the Minneapolis Bridge Collapse, prayer groups are gathering. And on the University of North Carolina campus, where the student body president was actually killed, a student-led event is taking place there. 
Prayer observances are being held in 110 federal prisons today as well. Each of these gatherings and the thousands of others taking place in every state and across the globe bear testimony to a vibrant spirit of intercession that perseveres throughout the nation. Thank you, Mr. President, for your unswerving dedication to the cause of prayer and your encouragement of this exercise of our religious freedom. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30 states, those who honor God, God will honor, and that is my prayer for you. It is my hope that the... It is my hope that the leaders and citizens of coming generations will continue to preserve this nation's legacy of faith so that with God as our strength and shield, our country will remain a strong beacon of freedom and moral uprightness in the world. Thank you very much. For the leader, for the children of Korach, an Alamot, a song. God is our refuge and stronghold, a help in trouble very near. Therefore we are not afraid, though the earth reels, though mountains topple into the sea, its waters rage and foam, in its swell mountains quake, Selah. There is a river whose streams gladden God's city, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is in its midst. It will not be toppled. By daybreak, God will come to its aid. Nations rage, kingdoms topple. At the sound of his thunder, the earth dissolves. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our haven, Selah. Come and see what the Lord has done how he has wrought desolation on the earth. He puts a stop to wars throughout the earth, breaking the bow, snapping the spear, consigning wagons to the flames. Desist, realize that I am God. I dominate the nations, I dominate the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our haven. Adonai tzvaot imanu misgavlanu Elohei Yaakov selah. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but lift everything in prayer and petition with thanksgiving Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, be focused on these. The word of the Lord. Will you bow your heads and hearts with me, please, as we commit this nation and ourselves to Almighty God. Holy Father, in a world where so many are hungry, you have given us food in abundance. In a world where so many are hurting, you offer to bind up our wounds. In a world where so many are lonely, you offer your friendship to every heart. 
in a world that is longing for peace, you offer hope. Yet, we are so stubborn and resistant. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Our nation is at a crossroads this year, Father. We look to you to be our strength and our shield. Please, please give us the guidance to elect one who will honor you and respond to the wisdom that is from above. To that, we pray our hope may be renewed and our blessings may be treasured. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the White House, and I'm honored to join you for the National Day of Prayer. I'm sorry Laura's not here. She's out selling her book. <laughs> Shirley, thank you very much for being the chairman of the National Day of Prayer. Glad you brought old Jim with you. Dr. Zacharias, thank you for being the honorary chairman. I appreciate the members of my cabinet who are here today. Thank you all for coming. It's good to see members of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. Appreciate you all taking time out of your busy schedule to come by. It's always good to be with you. I want to thank our military chaplains who are with us. Thank you for doing the Lord's work with our troops. I'm proud to have the prayer leaders here. Rabbi Fishman, thank you. It's good to see you again, sir. Brother Coughlin from the United States House of Representatives. It's good to see you, sir. I want to thank Pastor Mays, who will be following me here shortly for coming. I'm looking forward to hearing the choir of St. Patrick's Cathedral, New York City, New York. It's going to be a great moment to have this East Room filled with joy of, of song. And so we welcome them here today. On this day... Americans come together to thank our Creator for our nation's many blessings. We are a blessed nation. Amen. And on this day, we celebrate our freedoms, particularly the freedom to pray in public and the great diversity of faith found in America. I love being the president of a country where people feel free to worship as they see fit. And I remind our fellow citizens, if you choose to worship or not worship, and no matter how you worship, we're all equally American. I think one of the interesting things about a National Day of Prayer is it does help describe our nation's character to others. We are a prayerful nation. A lot of citizens draw comfort from prayer. Prayer is an important part of the lives of millions of, of Americans. And it's interesting, when you think about our faith, you can find it in the Pledge of Allegiance. You can find an expression of American faith in the Declaration of Independence. And you can find it in the coins in our pockets. I used to carry coins. <laughs> About 10 months I'll be carrying them again. <laughs> the fidelity to faith has been present in our nation's leaders from its very start. Upon assuming the presidency, George Washington took the oath of office and then added the famous plea, so help me God. On John Adams' first day in the White House, he wrote a prayer that is now etched in marble on the fireplace in the state dining room. And he prayed, may none but honest and wise men ever rule under this roof. Now, we'll leave it to the historians to judge whether or not that happened throughout our history. <laughs> During the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln turned to prayer. 
is the second inaugural address quoted from Scripture. He stood before the United States people and quoted, quoted from Scripture. And he sought to heal a people who read the same Bible and prayed to the same God. His words. As William McKinley lay dying from an assassin's bullet, one of his final words on earth focused on the Almighty. On his deathbed, he was heard to say, Nearer, my God, to thee. As American forces risked their lives on D-Day, Franklin Roosevelt delivered a presidential prayer over the radio. He asked God to protect our troops as they liberated a suffering humanity. And he prayed for a peace that will let all men live in freedom. When Roosevelt died, his successor, Harry Truman, said he felt like the moon, the stars, and all the planets had fallen on him. He told the reporters, Boys, if you ever pray, pray for me now. John F. Kennedy attended Mass in Florida during the last week of his presidency and during the last week of his life. It was at that Mass that he heard the parable where the, our Lord compared the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed that grew into a large tree and offered shelter to God's creatures. Three days after the worst terrorist attack on American soil, Laura and I joined our fellow citizens in prayer before the Lord. It was in the middle hour of our grief. We prayed for those who were missing. We prayed for the dead. We prayed for those who loved them. I recalled the words of a woman from New York who said, I prayed to God to give us a sign that he is still here. Well, sometimes God's signs are not always the ones we look for. And we learn in tragedy that his purposes are not always our own. But we also know that in adversity, we can find comfort through prayer. Over the last seven years, our country has faced many trials. And time and time again, we have turned to prayer and found strength and resilience. We prayed with those who've lost everything in natural disasters and helped them heal and recover and build. We prayed for our brave and brilliant troops who died on the field of battle. We lift up their families in prayer. And as we pray for God's continued blessings on our country, I think it makes sense to hope that one day, there may be an international day of prayer, that one day the national prayer It would be a chance for people of faith around the world to stop at the same time to pause to praise an almighty. It would be a time when we could pray together for a world that sees the promise of the Psalms made real. Your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. I want to thank you all for coming. I particularly want to thank you for your prayers. You know, somebody asked me one time, you know, when I was there overseeing the Sea of Galilee, they said, what did you think about when you were there, Mr. President? I said, I have finally understood the story of the calm on the rough seas. I may have been a little hard-headed at times, but I'm absolutely convinced it was the prayers of the people who helped me understood in turbulence you can find calm and strength. And I thank you for those prayers. Thank you, Mr. President. Shall we bow our hearts in a moment of prayer as we ask God's great blessing upon this great country? O oh God, as a nation, we are humbled by your loving kindness and tender mercy towards us. You've been our strength in moment of weakness, our shield protecting each of us 
our refuge, sheltering us from the storms of life. O God, as a nation, we need your wisdom, and we're not ashamed to confess our faults. Nor are we embarrassed to say that we need divine help. God, grant us the faith to believe in your presence, the heart to understand your purpose, and the mind to accept your perfect will this day. O God, as a nation, we have come together to say thanks. Thank you for being with our country, for touching our leaders, and for loving your people this day. Amen.
God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. God bless.